Welcome everyone. This is the agenda for today. So the agenda is essentially, I'll do a very quick intro. And then we'll talk about what is rules as code or RAC as we, as we call it. And then I'll be talking about a proof of concept that we did uh, for RAC and um, it, this was done for Gauss CMS. I'll be talking about Gauss CMS as well. Uh, we also did another uh, RAC uh, website called Benefit Me, which, which is actually a New Zealand website. Um, and then I'll be talking about the process and how Drupal comes in, and then we'll be having a Q&A session. For the Q&A, uh, we have an app, so if you have any Q&A and if you put your questions in the app, that would be great because uh, my colleague here will be able to see the questions and we can answer them as and when they pop up, or otherwise we can do a one-on-one -on -one as well. But um, doing it on your app would also be, it also works, so it would be great if you could do that. All right, so a bit about me. Uh, my name is Suchi Garg. Uh, I'm a technical manager at Salsa. Um, I've been working for 25 plus years with open source. I've been working with Drupal since um, 2006. Yes, uh, 4.6 was the Drupal version at that time. Um, I have been a dev, uh, tech lead, solution architect, mentor, project manager, you name it, I've done it. Uh, trainer, yeah. In this particular project, the one I'll be talking in detail, I was actually a dev. It was a very interesting uh, change of pace for me because uh, this was a POC, as I said, proof of concept, and we had to do it very, very quickly. Two weeks, three weeks, and we were done. So we needed somebody who could really push code through. So it was very interesting for me because I worked really hands-on, dirty, uh, hands dirty after a long time. Okay, so before we start anything, let's talk about what is rules as code. So as the diagram implies, the rules as code is a very emerging trend. It's, uh, it's very, very, it's, uh, it has started gaining a lot of traction. And it basically takes the legislation, regulations, and policies, and it converts that into machine-readable code. So it's not only a technocratic solution, but rules as code actually represents a shift in how governments create some types of rules and how different parties, third parties, can consume them. What are the benefits? All of us are tech people here, developers here, so I don't think I need to really spell out the benefits, but still, let's do that. Uh, there are several benefits uh, in having a single source of truth that can drive many, many applications. The first one is, of course, reducing of um, ambiguity. Rules as code makes it really, really clear what the rules are uh, and makes it more accessible and easy for citizens to access and uh, easy for them to find the information they're looking for. It makes the, the whole rules very, very reusable. So once, once the rules are coded, they can be reused by a website, Alexa, or any third party uh, engine, chatbots, anything. They are, of course, they become very easy to manage once, code, uh, once they are coded, uh, they are easy to maintain and change. So we know exactly where the changes need to go. Revisioning also happens very easily. They become very transparent. If anybody has any interaction with government rules, they are seriously, seriously long and they are very, very difficult to understand. So converting them into code makes, them, makes it much more uh, transparent. And of course, it, rules as code then can be used uh, to inform policy and model changes and how they will impact people down the line. So now in terms of the two projects, so uh, I'm from Salsa Digital, as I mentioned. We did two projects with rules as code. The first one was a POC, which was for Gulf CMS. Uh, the another one was Benefit Me, which was for the, for the New Zealand government. Uh, before we talk about uh, the project, let me talk about what Gulf CMS is actually. So um, Gulf CMS is Australia's whole of government website management platform. It is built on Drupal. It was designed to make it easier for agencies to create modern, affordable, and responsive uh, websites. So Gov CMS is actually managed by the Department of Finance, um, which is a federal uh, government entity, and 
it has actually increased the usage of Drupal in the government sector considerably. So some sort of background or context about the project. So GovCMS actually uh, had an expression of interest around um, DXP, Salsa responded to that uh, expression of interest for digital experience platform solutions. Uh, we were successful in that, and GovCMS asked us to create a proof of concept. Specifically, they wanted us to look at COVID vaccinations. This was in mid-2022, so at that time, COVID vaccinations were very, very relevant um, to, to help the citizens understand if their COVID vaccination status is up to date or not. So that is the journey that we picked, and that is the journey we uh, created in the rules of uh, rules as code POC that we did. There were actually six potential user journeys. Uh, one of the, and only one journey really, really stood out, stood out for us. Um, that's where the citizen is figuring out, hmm, what's happening? I need some information. I'm trying to access an entitlement or trying to comply with a government policy, but I don't know what to do about that. And that's where rules as code and RPOC came in. So, as I said, GovCMS wanted to look at the COVID vaccinations. It was, we initially, when the project started, the POC started, we said, hmm, COVID vaccination, whether I need a COVID vaccination or not, that should be a very, very easy thing to do. We were very wrong, we were so wrong, because going through all the legalities, going through all the rules that have been defined in pages and pages of text was not easy. So the two main journeys that we covered in our POC, one, as I mentioned, am I up to date with my COVID vaccination? And the second one was, do I have to be vaccinated from my work? Because in Australia, each different state has its own rules about different sectors. So if you are in NSW, for example, and if you're working in health sector, you have to be vaccinated. But if you're in NSW and some other sector, you may not need to be vaccinated. So we, we uh, did a POC for that one as well, that particular journey as well. And this was the final product. Now, if you look at the final product, there are actually two websites that we are showing. And the reason why we are doing two different websites was to showcase the fact that rules as code was well, the rules were coded at one central place, but those rules could be accessed by two different websites. The first one was for uh, the general public. The second one, if you look at it, it was for the indigenous Aboriginal uh, Torres people of Australia. And the, it was configured in a way that whenever, um, whenever they say information that was more related to their uh, own, their own um, situation, uh, also, Aboriginal and Torres people had different rules configured according for the COVID vaccination policies. Uh, even the booking links that we provided them, they get a priority if they go to a booking, um, booking website. So this was configured accordingly. But we created two websites. I will not be showing you the second one. I'll just be showing you the first one. So. This is the website, as I said, and these are some of the sample scenarios. A 55-year-old adult who's had five doses, last dose was uh, in June. This is DDMMYYYY, just to <laughs> clarify, and that can be confusion. Uh, a 32-year-old who has had three doses, last was 3rd of May. Uh, a parent looking for a five-year-old immunocompromised child who has had two doses, and parent looking for a four-year-old child. These are the few different uh, scenarios uh, or user journeys. I'll be picking up the first one to do a demo. And before I do that, I'll pray to the demo gods for a sacrifice or something. All right, so, uh, there's one out, sorry, give me a minute. Oh, there it is. Before we start, I just want you to know that this was just a POC that we created. Uh, we specifically made sure, we have an alert at the top which says this is not reliable information because things keep on changing and we were not keeping up to date with the changes. So this is just a proof of concept to tell you yes, that yes, this thing can work. 
All right, so let's look at, as I said, there were two. Am I up to date with my COVID vaccinations? And the second one was, do I have to be vaccinated for my work? All right, so let's go with the first one. The first page gives you some information, keeping your COVID-19 vaccination up to date is, why is it important, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a button, this is all Drupal content, nothing very specific going on here. So when we start, the way this particular PLC was implemented, that it was a series of web forms. So the first web form, um, we input some information. When the web form gets submitted, it actually goes to the rules as code engine, which, is, which was actually coded not in Drupal, but in OpenFisca. It goes there, it gets the information back, and based on whatever information comes back, it goes to either one page or another page. That's how the whole journey was created. So for example here, if I input something like two-year-old, now as per the rules, at least the rules at that time, a two-year-old does not have a vaccination. So if I in input two-year-old here, it will actually go to a page will say, sorry, you're not uh, eligible for a vaccination. And actually, let's go ahead and do that. Right? So the moment I submitted, it actually pulled the OpenFisca engine. It sent out the information that the age is two, and the return came back saying, um, no, you're not eligible. Now, because this was a POC, we were able to make it ugly as well. And that is why if you see that five is actually highlighted in yellow. So this is actually the information that is coming from the rules as code engine. This is not something that is hard coded in Drupal. So it says that you have to, and this, these were the tokens that we were using in Drupal. So it, it says that you need to be five years old and over to be vaccinated. And how does, how does that help? Tomorrow, if the, the age changes from five to three, we have to make that change only in the rules as code engine. We don't have to make any change here, and it will automatically get reflected here. Let's start over. Okay, how old are you? I'll put 55, I am not 55. So the moment I, I said that I am 55, now it went to the rules as code engine again, and when it came back, it says, hmm, you're eligible, let me ask you more questions. And what are the questions? Are you immunocompromised? Because as per the Australian laws, if you're immunocompromised, the rules are slightly different, and if you're not, the rules are slightly different. So that's why it's asking the question. I say no. And based on in this one, it again goes to a next form. And in, in the next form, it asks you how many doses you have you already had, and what was the date of your last one. So I can say something like hmm, five, four, whatever. And let me just put in, not a 2022 date, maybe a this year date, um, 16th of, or 18th, 16th, 18th, 16th, um, 16th of February. And it, I do a summit, oh, what is the error? Sorry, um, I forgot. <laughs> this was, um, this POC was created last year, so we have to, um, I have to put the date which is less than the last year. So I'll put something like 8th of December. So it said 8th of December, which was more than six, six months. So as per the Australian laws, which we read, which we went through, it says that if you are six months or over, then you are eligible for your next dose. So that's what it says. Currently, you're not up to date because it has been more than six months since your last vaccination date. Again, if you look at the highlighted parts, those are all the things that are actually stored in OpenFisca. They are not stored in Drupal, so everything is coming from there. And we are just displaying them as tokens. And because this is Drupal content, we were actually able to uh, add a lot more information here. And what are the kind of information? So this was a make a booking link. 
And as I was saying, for the Aboriginal and the Torres Strait uh, website, the make and booking was slightly different. It had a parameter which says that this is uh, priority uh, booking, so we were able to make that change. And it also gives you more information. And again, if you have had COVID in the past three months, then you are not eligible for a vaccination, uh, and you will have to have your vaccination three months later. It also gives you information about what are the recommended vaccinations for you based on your age. Again, these are all rules that, were, that are actually um, defined by the uh, Department of Health uh, in Australia. And this information, as I said again, this was coming from the rules as code, and it, we are just showing it up um, on the Drupal website. All right, um, so that was the one that we did for um, Am I Up To Date? The other one that we did was, do I have to be vaccinated for my work? And as I said, this was very state-related, state-specific. Um, in this one, there, was, there is actually not a flow of web forms. This was just one conditional web form. Uh, and when I, when I said something like, okay, I am in Victoria, just to show you that there are so many states and union territories in Australia, but we did the POC only for three of them. Um, New South Wales, Victoria, and Western Australia. So I'm from Victoria. Which sector do you work in? I worked in, let's say, um, health, aged care, healthcare. Again, this is pulling the rules as code and trying to get information from there. Because I am working with healthcare, I have to be vaccinated, and I have to have at least three doses. I could, have, I could actually go back here and say some other sector. Again, Victoria. I'm thinking maybe um, education. Do you work in a specialist school? And that's where the conditional form actually comes in. It's not a specialist school. So you don't need to be vaccinated. There's no government requirement to be vaccinated. All right, going back to our, uh, okay. The other one that we did, as, is, as I was telling you, was uh, benefit me uh, for New Zealand. Let me actually do a very quick demo for that as well. Is it working? Um, okay. Yep, it doesn't work, sorry. <laughs> the website, the, and maybe the internet connection is not working or something. I'll come back to the demo if there is time, if time permits, I'll come back to this demo. Uh, let's go back to our presentation. So that was, as I said, we did a rules as code for New Zealand. The rules as code thing that we did for New Zealand was essentially about uh, benefit me. It was around what all, um, what am I entitled to as a person from the government? So things like, am I entitled to a household um, benefit? Am I entitled to an un unemployment benefit, a family benefit, etc. So that's, and benefitme.nz is actually not a POC, it's an actual website which people are using. So it was, uh, as I said, it was around uh, New Zealand social security benefits. Um, and we worked with the digital AOTORA collective. <laughs> Sorry, it's a tongue twister. Uh, if nobody knows, it's, it's the name of New Zealand actually. Um, and we fed the learnings of GovCMS POC into this project as well. All right, so that was the demo, a bit of demo, et cetera. Now let's talk about the, some technical aspects of it. I'll not go into deep into technical stuff, but something. So the rules as code engine that we picked 
for our POC and for our project was Open Fisco. Now, what is Open Fisca? Open Fisca is actually an uh, open source API first rules as code framework, and it was developed in 2011 for the French government. So we are at the right place for Open Fisca. Uh, it standardized the way in which rules are written and provides a common request response pattern um, to use in connected clients. Uh, this allows inter integration to different systems. Uh, in this case, we chose Drupal, but it can be any other system. It can be something like um, a voice thing or a chatbot, et cetera, et cetera. At the moment, uh, many uh, rules as code projects in France, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and other jurisdictions, they use OpenFisca. Uh, also, OpenFisca is Python-based. Yeah, it's written right there, and it's open source the most important thing. So broadly, this was our solution architecture. Um, nothing very technical going on here. So all the rules were coded in OpenFisca. Then we used Drupal as a content API, and we used Drupal. Uh, we actually created a module which integrated web forms with OpenFisca. So we created web forms which integrated uh, with uh, OpenFisca, which were able to uh, call OpenFisca, and that's how we created our, uh, our POC or our benefitme.nz, but the whole purpose of this solution architecture was that because Drupal is a content API, this can feed into mobile apps, into voice devices, et cetera, or even rules as code, the OpenFisca engine can directly feed into um, the rules uh, into voice uh, devices, other system interfaces, et cetera, and websites as well. Now let's start with the whole process. How did we do the uh, PLC? Because um, the technical parts are, yes, they are important, but there was a whole process associated with it. The process can be divided into broadly into five steps. Um, the first step was, I would say, the most difficult one. Um, we had to look at the rules, analyze them, and map them, and then that then they went into the open fisca and they were coded as configuration slash coding we'll talk about that a bit uh, later then um, so open fisca was configured then we had a drupal open open fisca module which was actually a web form open fisca module uh, using which we created web forms which integrated with the rules as code engine and we also used uh, drupal as content using which the results pages were set up. Those were broadly the five steps. So let's talk about the first step. This is, um, in terms of rule mapping, uh, this was the initial part, uh, and it's, it was actually really, really important because traditionally rules and legislation tend to be written in a very, very complex way. It can, it can be written in very complex languages, it can be written in 20 different pages, and you have to really um, make sure that you're going through each and every one of them to convert them into plain English. So, initial rules, and as you can see, um, if you look at the screenshot, we actually used Miro to do our rules analysis, um, and we were able to do something like this uh, using Miro. So we basically, what we did was that we get a high level model capturing the entities, uh, the legislative requirements, the logic, the calculation, and then that was converted into machine consumable legislation. So using these kinds of, and I'll show you if you can't see those clearly, you can have a look at them here, one of them. So if you look at this one, uh, yeah, so in this case, this was a special case for where your age is greater than five but less than 12, because that had a very different rules as compared to less than five in which uh, there were no rules because you're not eligible, and if you're greater than 12, you are considered an adult and they had a different rule set. So this was the flow for greater than five, greater than equal to five, and less than equal to 12. And this is an example to figure out whether you're up to date or not. So as you can see, 
if whether you're up to date or not, there are so many things that you have to um, capture. And yeah, again, so in this one, we were actually able to define the calculations as well. If this is this, and this is this, and this is this, then the output should be this. That is how we started to analyze our rules. All right? So next then is the process of looking at these, and then we had to codify and put them into the open fiscal solution. And how did we do that? We had to, we started with uh, creating some test scenarios. We had to then create entities, and I'll talk about entities in a minute, parameters, variables, which had inputs and outputs. So the way open fiscal works, uh, this is an example of a, a test case. Yeah, this is an example of a test case. Now the way open fiscal works is that it has to have an entity. I'll show you in here. So to give you an example, in this case, so entities could be something like an individual, it can be a household, it can be a company, an organization, based on the different rules that you have to follow. So in this case, we're talking about vaccination, right? So vaccination needs to be applied on a per person basis. So that's why our entity was a person. But if you look at the benefitme.nz example, uh, there we were talking about uh, entitlement, the social security entitlement. And in that case, that entitlement is not actually on a per person basis. If you are in a family, if you have a spouse, if you have children, it becomes a household thing. So in that scenario, our entity was household. So open fiscal uh, plays on, on uh, it. Entity is a super important thing to configure. So in this case, uh, we configured the entity to be a uh, person. The next step was to define parameters. So parameters, all of us, I'm hoping many of us are from a dev background, yes, no? So we do understand what are parameters, what are input variables, what are output variables. So I don't really need to explain that to you in detail. But parameters, as the examples shows here, is a minimum age of COVID vaccination eligibility. We actually also, uh, because we were doing a PLC, we wanted to show how flexible the rules of score POC is. And we wanted to also show how easy it is to maintain. So rules as code is actually versionable as well. So if you look at this one, it says that from 1st of August 2022, the value is five, but because we were doing a PLC and this is not an actual number, but from 1st of, uh, 1st of January 23, the value is three. So when we were doing our PLC, if, the, um, if I did it today, for example, uh, it would take the value three. So if I put five, it would actually allow me to go and say, yes, you're eligible. But if I had done this POC demo last year, it would, uh, if I have put my age as four, it would have said you're not ex eligible. So we can easily change the parameter values, and these are all date-based. So it allows us to revision stuff as well. Okay? Does anybody have questions? I'm okay with pausing and... Um, answering any questions. All right, either I'm making it very clear or either I'm making it very, very difficult, nobody's understanding anything, but okay, let's go ahead. Um, so the next thing is the variables. Uh, variables, property of a person or entity, whatever. So in this case, the, va the input variables were, are you immunocompromised, which was Boolean? Uh, how many doses have you had? Right? And the, sec and the third one is, what was the date of your last vaccine dose? And based on these three inputs, and of course the age was another one, you actually, um, actually let's talk about that in next. So whenever we are defining the variables in OpenFSCA, it actually has a value type, entity, definition period, label, and reference. And as you can see from the example here, so vaccine doses, it's of type integer, uh, last vaccine is of the type date, as we can see. Are you immunocompromised? It's of the type bool, because it can be either yes or no. It also has, of course it has a label, but it also has a definition period. Definition period is very important as well. Um, 
because these things are defined on a per day basis. So that's why the definition period is here is day. The whole POC that we, we created is very, very defined on a per day basis. In benefitme.nz, it was on a per week basis because all the calculations are done on a per week basis. But in this case, it was based on your date and et cetera, et cetera. So that, way, that is why the definition period here is day. And then uh, there's a formula which then calculates an output variable. So this is an example. If this is this, this is this, is up to date, is the output formula. Are you up to date? Yes, no. And as you can see, COVID vaccination up to date, the value type is bull because yes and no, that's the only answer that you get. All right, so now let's come to the, so we, we configured everything into, into OpenFISCA, which is an open source Python-based thing. It's totally independent. It was actually hosted on a different server altogether because we wanted to showcase that part. And what happens now in the, on the Drupal end? Now Drupal end actually has um, two parts. One is the rules part and one is the related content part. So before I go ahead, as I was mentioning, we actually went ahead and created a web form uh, FISCA module. Uh, sorry, that module is not yet open source because POC, time, budget, money. And also this is very, very specific to the POC we created. Uh, so what that module allowed us to do, and I'll show you some uh, images as well there. It allows us to say, when we are creating a web form, it allows us to say, yes, this is an open FISCA thing. It allows us, us to uh, put in the URL for the API, the OpenFISCA API. And the moment we start doing that, the API sends us a list of variables. So when we start creating a web form and we create each and every field, we can actually map it, map it with one of the OpenFISCA fields. So for the first form, which was very, very the most simple, simplest of the forms, where I said age, when I set age as a form, uh, as an integer field, I could actually map it and say that this maps to the age variable on OpenFISCAIN. There might be some uh, form elements which don't need to be mapped. We are just showing it for uh, information purposes or whatever, and that's perfectly fine, but we were able to do the mappings. Also, this module allows us to create then once the web form is submitted, it allows us to send a query to the OpenFISCA, and we were able to configure what are the variables that we want as output, because those are the variables that then decided whether we want to go to a page or whether we want to go to a web form page. Again, first form, for enter three or two, the return would be no, you're not eligible for uh, vaccination, so you go to this particular page, that's it, and so on and so forth. So web forms, and then we uh, nodes which actually, so even this branching rule which says that, okay, if the value returned is this, go here, if the value returned is this, go here, we actually made sure that this was also content editable. We did not want to hard code them. So we created a very simple content type which could be attached to a web form and we could actually say if the return value, return variable x is true, go here, x is true and x, y is false, go here and so on and so forth. So that was, uh, that was the rules content. So this is an example, I'm just showing you. This was the rules content, so first one, as I was explaining to you, how old are you? If you submitted more than, uh, greater than five, the rules content said, okay, you can now go to the second web, second step. The second step is, are you immunocompromised? The third step is, how many vaccination doses? When was your last dose? And accordingly, it will land to a results page. Now the results page, there were several pages which were created as results based on the different combinations and permutations. So that was the rules content flow. This particular um, screenshots, combination of screenshots, actually shows you how we can attach a web form 
and how we can do settings within the web form. So here, when we go to add handler, we could actually add the open Fisca journey handler, which we created, and we could put the open Fisca endpoint, the return value that we wanted, and you don't need to worry about this one because this is automatically calculated when we are creating the form. So this is a screenshot of when we are creating a web form. And as I was mentioning, in the first screenshot you can see that I have put in, a, I've created a new field. And when we go to edit the field, at the very bottom we have, because it's Fisca enabled, I have another field uh, where I can actually see all the variables which are available in Open Fisca. And then I can map it here. So this was the age one, these are the, this is, part of the list, and I can select that, yes, this particular field is the age field. And when we create these, these the, when we, we are doing this form, the UI, and when we save the web form, if you remember in the last one, so this is automatically calculated based on what we create in the UI. So that was how we created the web forms, but we also had to create uh, the journey, so they, we created, it, this was very simple, again, POC, quick and dirty, quick and dirty. So we went ahead and created a content type called rules. It had one field which was for the web form, and then within that we could have uh, multiple things. So this is the simple one which says, if the return value of COVID vaccination eligibility is false, we direct to this page. If it is true, redirect to this page. This is the simplest one, this is a more complex one. So this is the last one, the last form. So we get so many return values and we could put in a combination of this is true, this is false, this is true, go here. This is false, this is true, this is true, go here, and so on and so forth. So we created, in Drupal, we created a lot of result pages based on the requirements. And as I said, Drupal part had two parts. One was the rules content. We just talked about the rules content. And this is about the related content. And related content is actually the content we created in uh, Drupal. And we, as I was mentioning, we uh, used tokens a lot. So whatever was being returned, we showed them as tokens. And all the results page that you see here, they're all uh, rules pages. And these are the pages that were, we are being redirected to um, using the earlier one, using this one. So you're not eligible for a vaccine is a page, and similarly about your COVID vaccination history is, is another page. All right, actually I'm very, very early. Am I? Two questions, yeah. All right, so we have two questions. So the question is, is it possible for a client to change the rule themselves, or it has to be done by a developer? The rules themselves, they need to be done by a developer, because they are the ones that are quoted in Open Fisca, the rules as quote engine, so that needs to be done by a developer. But the whole flow, et cetera, that can be done by clients. And the, so the question is, I think uh, the strength is the web form slash open fiscal integration module. And so maybe the community help and create a dev branch. I totally agree. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you one of, one of the reasons were of course time and money that we didn't have time to make it a, the other reason was also the fact that not always we, we did not need that, we needed that module, yes, but not always we were using the same flow. So in the benefitme.nz example, we did not have a flow of web forms. It was one big, huge web form, and then um, once that is submitted, so web form open fiscal module, yes, it is needed, and yes, we can talk about, um, we can, I can go ahead and create a dev branch or something on, uh, we, we, had, we had plans about making it open source, um, 
So if anybody of you is interested, please contact me and we can talk about that and we can make it open source, at least a dev version, so people can take and uh, plan accordingly. But um, I'll have to warn you, it's very dirty at the moment, but that's how everything begins. So yes, we can do that. Yes. Which, so the question is, are the YAML files stored in your repository or the open FISCA? Are you talking about the rules YAML files? They are, they are, they, so the rules engine is a totally separate thing. And uh, the Drupal part is just an integration. So rules engine uh, is stored, everything is stored. The YAML files that we show, the examples that we show, that, that we saw, they're all in that open FISCA. They are not in Drupal. The question is, is this only be used for legislation or can it be used for brands, etc.? It can be used anywhere. It's just a POC we did for legislation and government, but, but if brands need, yes, I can understand what you're talking about, that if you have a huge organization and you have different brands, but there are some rules that need to be followed for all brands, yes, it can be used there as well. So the question is that rules are in a book or on a website, et cetera. That was actually covered in, my, in the first part of my presentation. So yes, that is a manual process. The rules have to be read through. And um, I can actually show you the diagram very quickly if possible. So we used Miro to you know, extract that information and try to convert it uh, in a way that it could be then coded. So that is, yes, that is a manual process. Any more questions? All right, thanks all for attending. Goodbye. <laughs>